What is up guys, it's your favourite Scotsman Ryan here and finally I have got the build guide put together for my $2000 gaming slash editing PC. So I'm really sorry that it has taken so long but there was a problem and that was the first motherboard that I had, the X99A, was dead on arrival so I had to wait on a new motherboard being shipped out. And we now have the X99 Sabertooth, which is a better board, so I can't really complain. So with that said guys, sorry for the long wait, but here is the video, so let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing I always do when building a new PC is prepare the motherboard. Take the motherboard out of the packaging and carefully place it on top of the box, and this will give you a good work surface to use. The first thing we are going to do is seat our CPU. So on the motherboard, remove the cover by unsecuring the two levers and lifting the latch upwards. The next step is very important, so make sure that you take note of the gold triangle on the CPU and also on the motherboard as well, as these have to match up. When you are happy, go ahead and place the CPU gently into the socket and I stress do not apply any force at all and definitely make sure that you do not touch the surface of the CPU, otherwise you will have to go ahead and clean it. When you are happy, go ahead and close the latch back over and secure the two pins into place again. The next step is to install our RAM. So go ahead and undo all the clips like you see here. Then take your RAM and make sure the notch on the RAM matches the notch on the slot and gently apply pressure to both sides of the RAM to snap it into place. Just repeat this for all your RAM sticks and when you are finished you should have something that looks like this. Next, take your case and lay it flat on the table as we are now going to install our IO shield. So make sure you have the orientation correct and go ahead and push the IO shield into its slot. Just apply some pressure and it should easily snap into place. Now we can go ahead and install our motherboard. So gently place the motherboard in the case making sure that the IO ports line up with the shield and it should sit nice and snug in the case. So now that the motherboard is in the case, we can go ahead and screw it down. I suggest using a crisscross pattern as this will make sure that the motherboard is not flexed at all during the installation and also never over tighten the screws on the motherboard as they can easily strip and this will only give you a headache going down the line so just take your time and you should be good to go. So now that the motherboard is in place, we can go ahead and install our standoffs for the H100i which are included in the box. So just screw them down by hand and again, do not over tighten them. So the next job is to install our radiator and all we have to do is remove the magnetic dust filter from the bottom of the case. Then we can lower the radiator in and simply put it in position and use the screws provided to secure it in place. We can now go ahead and apply the heatsink over the CPU, so just make sure the clip fits over the standoffs we fitted earlier. Then simply use the thumb screws provided to secure it into place. Again, a crisscross pattern is best. When we have them all tightened up with our thumb, you can go ahead and give it a little extra tightening with the screwdriver, but again, do not overdo it. Now it's time to connect the H100i up. Start by taking this CPU fan cable and connecting it to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. On this motherboard, it is the beige connector you see here and it should be labelled nice and clear. And when you have it hooked up, it should look something like this. Next, we take our two radiator fans and plug them into the two cables attached to the heatsink and you simply push them into place, making sure that they are nice and snug and you are good to go. Next step is to plug the mini USB cable into the H100i and this will allow the PC to make changes and monitor the cooler via Corsair's software. So plug the mini USB into the port on top of the cooler and the other end simply goes into a USB header on the motherboard and when it's connected you should have something that looks like this. So now we can go ahead and connect all of our case cables. Take the HD audio cable and plug it into the connector labelled AAFP and when you have done that it should look like this. Next we take our USB 3.0 cable and plug it into the port labelled USB 3.0 on the motherboard. Thankfully our motherboard arrived with a front panel adapter so this step is easier than normal. Just take all of your front panel cables and plug them into the corresponding connections. Now take a note of the layout of the holes on the bottom and locate the front panel headers on the board and simply plug it into place. Next take the USB 2.0 cable and go ahead and connect it to the USB 2.0 header on the motherboard and when you have connected all those cables you should have something that looks like this. Next up what we have to do is take the shield for the power supply off of the case and simply place it on the power supply itself. 
So simply match the holes up and use the screws provided to tighten it into place. Then you can go ahead and place the power supply in the case and tighten it down with the thumb screws provided. Now that the power supply is in place, it's time to start connecting our cables. Take the 8 pin CPU cable, locate the header on the board that's clearly labelled and simply push the cable into place and it should fit nice and secure. Now it's time to take our 24 pin cable and plug it onto the motherboard. This is what gives the motherboard power so just make sure that it is plugged in properly. You do have to use a little extra force with this cable and when seated properly it should snap into place. Now that we have connected our cables, we will go ahead and fit our graphics card. Locate your PCIe 1 slot and push the lever down, then you will want to remove the PCIe plate simply by removing the thumb screws and they will pull right out. Then when you are happy, line the GPU up and simply push it into place. You will have to add a little pressure but make sure not to overdo it and you should feel it snap into place. Next support the GPU with one hand and use the other hand to screw the GPU down. You will want to make sure that these screws are nice and tight as they support the GPU and leaving them loose will cause the GPU to sag which can cause damage over time. Now that the GPU is fitted, we have to go ahead and give it power. Take the two 6 plus 2 cables from the power supply that look like this and go ahead and fit them. I usually put the 2 pin cable in first followed by the 6 pin as it usually makes fitting them a little easier. When you are finished you should have something that looks like this, then you can go ahead and tidy your cables up. If you have any extras like I do, like the Elgato HD60 Pro, all you have to do is go ahead and fit it into the PCIe slot and it gets screwed into place exactly like the GPU. Now we can go ahead and fit all of our hard drives. Remove the quick release bait from the back of the case and fitting the hard drive on this is pretty simple. Just line these little holders up with the screw holes on your hard drive and I do this by putting one side in first then pulling the other side out while pushing the hard drive down and it will snap into place with ease. Then just go ahead and push it back into the bay. Take a SATA cable that looks like this from the power supply and go ahead and plug it into the hard drive to give it power. Then take one of the SATA cables that were included with your motherboard, plug one end into the hard drive, then simply plug the other end into a SATA port on your motherboard and you are good to go. On this case, we can simply fit our SSDs into the quick release bays and simply follow the exact same process again to connect them up that we did with our hard drive. So now that you have everything fitted and in place, I would take this time to go ahead and do some cable management. Just go ahead and tidy up your cables and definitely make sure that all of your connections are nice and solid as if they are not then the PC will probably not boot up at all. So when you are finished, go ahead and give power to the power supply and hook a monitor, mouse and keyboard up. Then go ahead and press that power button and hold your breath and hope that it turns on. If it does, the PC should boot into the BIOS. Then simply take a minute to make sure that all of your RAM and hard drives etc are recognised and then you can go ahead and install Windows as well as all the drivers that arrived with your parts. So I chose not to go ahead and show you the install of Windows just because this video was getting a tad long and there are already loads of tutorials on Windows installs on YouTube and I will go ahead and leave one link down below just in case you guys want to go ahead and check it out. So the next video will be part 3 where we will go ahead and benchmark and also do some gaming tests on this PC just to let you guys see how it performs. I'm also planning on doing an overclocking guide as well as a review on the H100i as well as a lot of you guys have shown some interest in that. So as always guys if you have any questions just ask down below and if you enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a thumbs up as it really does help the channel. As always guys stay safe. Be kind to each other, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.